this is what we are going to be making today. I'm going to be sharing with you guys this cake recipe. Can we just? Do you see how moist and fluffy and oh my goodness, it is so good. Let's get started. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my marble cake recipe. Now you can use this as cupcakes, you can use this as a bundt cake, or in any kind of cake pan that you want. The only thing that's going to differ is your baking time. But let's go ahead right into the recipe and get started because it is really easy to do and it is delicious. Okay? Need I say more? So good. Such a good cake. So into a bowl here, I have I have my hand mixer here. You can use a standing mixer if you want. I have one and a half sticks of butter that is really nice and soft. It's been out all evening, so it is ready. It's at room temperature. Fast forwarding here to share with you something really important to make this extra special. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna make this cake extra special. Okay, I'm gonna be right back. Extra, extra special. I highly recommend using a really good quality butter. Now this one I got from Costco and it is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And my last video I said I love Kerrygold butter, which I think I said was from New Zealand, but actually I believe Kerrygold is from Ireland. Either way, it doesn't matter. Use a good quality butter and I'm telling you the flavor of the yellow part of this cake is gonna be so good. I promise you that. Get yourself, it doesn't have to be this one. You can be Kerrygold. Am I saying, is it Kerrygold? Am I losing my mind? Anyways, use a really good quality butter, grass-fed, and usually like New Zealand or Irish butter or something like that, the, the, just that's what you wanna use. I have some cane sugar here. You can use granulated sugar if you want, and I will have all the amounts in the description box for you. We're gonna cream, oh look how smooth and creamy that butter is, I'll tell you. We're gonna um, go ahead and cream this butter and this sugar together. Now, as with most of my cakes, when I am creaming it together with my mixer, uh, look, I got something in my mixer there. When I'm creaming it with my mixer, I cream it for about five minutes, and every minute I will get in there and scrape the bottom and the sides of the bowl. So whether you are doing this with a hand mixer or a stand mixer, or even with a whisk, you always did you want to do it for about five minutes um, so we really fluff up this mixture and um, you want to scrape the sides and the bottom every minute so I know pumpkin is what is in right now pumpkin everything the holidays are right around the corner. Um, and you know what's really great about making a cake like this is you can have this cut into little rectangles and put it out on a platter. Um, if you have a get together or family over. You can just cut them up in slices and plate them beautifully out on your dinner table or your, you know, whatever it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the bottoms and the side, the, the bottoms and the side, the sides and the bottom of my bowl here. And I'm just gonna continue doing this for about five minutes. So I'm gonna just continue it and I'll see you guys back when I'm done that. So I have about one more minute with this and I just wanted to show you um, the color difference in it. I, there might be like a shadow or something. Let me turn this this way. Okay. The color is going to get a lot lighter and it is going to be this fluffy, marshmallowy fluff type of batter that we're working with here. Um, the start tarot batter. And that's why five minutes, really, I have one more minute and then I'm going to mix it. It, just really take that time and mix it together because it's really gonna make a difference in your cake so I'm gonna go for one more minute and again every minute or so I'm just scraping the bottom and the sides of the bowl make sure and get all of that off your mixer okay now I do like to use a hand mixer for making some cakes and this one in particular like I could pull out my mixer 
uh, my standing mixture and do it. But it, I find that a hand mixer, and this one is the Bear, I think that's the name of it, Bear. Um, they had sent me this one a while ago. And guys, I tell you, I have used this mixer so, 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 so much. And if you know that I do holiday baking and stuff like that, I tell you I have used that hand mixer. I'll see if I can link it down below if they still have it available. But I like to use a hand mixer because it really gets... Um, the bottom of the bowl really gets to the sides of the bowl and stuff like that. So brought it back in the center. Now we're going to add in our eggs. So I have three eggs here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to separate two of these eggs. So I'm going to separate two of these eggs here and we're going to take the yolk and we're going to pop the yolk into our um, butter and our sugar right here. So we're going to have two large egg yolks and then our third egg, we're just going to use one large egg for our cake. So one large egg and two large egg yolks. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix this with my hand mixer until it's incorporated. All right, that is incorporated. The color is going to be uh, more of a vibrant, well, more of like a light pale yellow color. And we're going to add in some vanilla. Now, because this cake um, is going to be a marble cake, we want a lot of vanilla flavor in this part. So I'm going in with two tablespoons of vanilla extract, guys. Now, mix this in. All right, so let's start the voiceover time because when you have children running around, it's almost impossible to do a full video without noise in the background. But in this bowl here, I have some chocolate chips. This is semi-sweet chocolate chips. You can also use chocolate chunks or a half a bar of baking chocolate. Again, all the amounts will be listed below in the description box. And to this, we're going to add in some heavy cream, heavy whipping cream. We're going to place this in the microwave now for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. You can do it in increments of 15 seconds if you don't want to. You definitely don't want to burn your chocolate chips. So... What I like to do is I like to let it go for 30 seconds and then I'll then I'll do it again for another 15 seconds. I don't want to leave it for 45 seconds straight because you do run the risk of burning your chocolate. So 30 to 45 seconds, put that heavy cream. You want to make sure that all that chocolate is nice and nestled into the heavy cream. It may not cover all the chocolate, but want to make sure it's nice and nestled. Place this in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then I'll place it for another 15 seconds. After I've popped it in the microwave, I'm going to let it sit there for about a minute just so it can do its melting process and then we're going to just stir it in. Now while that's in the microwave here, I have my 8x8 dish here. This is what I'm going to be using to make this cake, but again, you can make this in cupcakes. Um, you can make it in a 10-inch pan or a 9-inch pan. It's going to completely depend on whatever pan you have. If you are using one of these Pyrex dishes, it's going to be hard to fluff this sugar, um, this flour around. So what I have done is I have taken butter and placed it all around the sides of my pan. Doesn't matter what pan you're using. If you're using cupcakes, just go ahead and use cupcake liners. And I'm going to sprinkle about two teaspoons of flour. And I'm going to start to uh, just hit this with my hand so the flour goes all around the sides all around the bottom as best as it can. Now it won't be so difficult if you are using like a regular cake pan because those are a lot lighter but because this is glass um, Pyrex it is a little bit tougher for it to go around but I do like to have this I use my 8x8 all the time you just want to make sure that it's covered with the butter and the flour. That's just an option. You can also use nonstick cooking spray or you can just use some parchment paper. It's going to completely depend on what you want. I do like that little crust that the butter, the butter, the butter, the butter and the flour creates at the bottom. So that's why I do like to use the butter and the flour. If you do have little leftover remnants, you just want to get the discard of that. You don't want um, any leftover flour, like a ton of it. 
left over at the bottom of your dish. So now we are going to take our chocolate chips and heavy cream out of the microwave. I let it sit in the microwave for about a minute once it was finished. Or you can let it sit on your counter for about a minute. And then we're going to stir this all together until it becomes essentially like a chocolate sauce. So now my dry ingredients here in my sieve, I have some cake flour and some baking powder. Now you can of course just use all purpose flour if that's all that you have. Cake flour is just going to get this cake a little bit lighter if, if you want your cake to be a little bit lighter. So I am definitely using cake flour. After we're finished sifting our flour, now we're also going to need some whole milk for our wet ingredients. Let's get back our butter, sugar, and eggs. And to that, I'm gonna add in about half of my dry ingredients, which was my flour and my baking powder. And to that, I'm gonna add in half of my wet ingredients. And I am using whole milk for this. So we're gonna add half of that milk and we're going to stir this in until it's mostly incorporated. Now, when you're stirring this in, you don't want to be super gentle and light. There's no eggs that we're not trying to deflate or anything like that. You just want to make sure and work with it so that it, it's quickly incorporated. So we're not working with that flour too much. So I'm just mixing that in until it becomes incorporated. And once it becomes mostly incorporated like this, I'm going to take about 20 to 30 seconds and just kind of really... Make sure that there are no big lumps of flour. Now you may have little lumps, but you don't want big lumps of flour. You don't want to overmix your flour because you're not looking for bread. We're not trying to really work with the flour. So just take about 20 seconds or so and just mix that in. And to that, now we're going to make our chocolate part of this cake. Now I love chocolate. If you've seen any of my recipes, I love chocolate. It's, 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 there's nothing better than chocolate, okay? So I really like the chocolate portion of this cake. So I am using one cup of this batter to make my chocolate part of this cake. Now, if you want more vanilla part, go ahead and use about three quarter cup of the batter. So all I'm doing is portioning out that batter. If you want more vanilla, go ahead and use about three quarter cup to one cup of the batter. And we're just going to mix this in with our chocolate sauce that we've created. Now I'm also going to add in some Dutch processed cocoa powder. Try not to get it all over the place like I did because I'm just a mess. But we're going to sift in some Dutch processed cocoa powder. Again, all the amounts will be listed below in the description box. Sift that in and then we're going to mix together this goodness. Wozers, can you see that? Oh my goodness. I'm going to just be quiet right now. So we can take a look at this glorious goodness that is in front of me. My, my, my. What I tell you? <laughs> oh, I get so excited. I get so excited. Okay, once this is mostly mixed in like that, the same chocolate chips that I used earlier, which was some semi-sweet chocolate chips, I'm going to add in about a, a, you know, a small handful. It depends on how much you want. A third of a cup is good for me, anywhere between a quarter and a third. And we're just going to kind of fold that in. Look, scrape the bottom of that bowl because you want to make sure that all of that chocolate is getting incorporated. And yes, I did really take about almost a minute to mix this batter in. It took about almost a minute, 45 seconds to a minute, to really make sure that that was properly mixed in and folded in all right so i said i was gonna be quiet and let y'all see that goodness and then i proceeded to keep talking which is pretty typical of me but anyways so i have my yellow batter here and i'm going to place this into my eight by eight pan my oven is already preheated to 350 degrees you want to make sure that your oven is already preheated to 350 degrees so when you're done you can just pop it directly into your oven get all of that yellow batter out in there and then I'm just going to make sure it's in one even layer. Now you can do this um, in lots of different ways, however you want to do it. I like to just do yellow because I don't have the patience to really dollop and dollop and dollop and dollop 
but you can do a little portion of yellow, a little portion of chocolate, a little portion of yellow, a little portion of chocolate, and then swirl it. What I'm doing is just the easy way here, and I'm doing one layer of yellow, and then I'm gonna dollop my chocolate on top of it, and then swirl it all together. If you're doing this in cupcakes, you can um, use a little toothpick to swirl in that chocolate. You want about half portion of your yellow and half portion of your chocolate, and just swirl it all in. So I am just plopping this all in, and then I'm gonna use a butter knife to swirl this all together. Now baking time is gonna be very important for this cake because it really depends on the cake pan that you're using. If you are using an eight by eight like I am, this is gonna take anywhere from 45 minutes to 50 minutes at 350 degrees. So 45 to 50 minutes at 350 for an eight by eight pan. If you are using cupcakes, it's gonna take about 20 to 25 minutes for this to bake. And when this cake bakes in an eight by eight pan, the top of it gets all crackly like a brownie and when I tell you, it's so good. It is so good. So I'm going to just take a butter knife here and I'm going to swirl it as best that I can. I am not trying to mix this batter all together, but I'm just trying to swirl it so that chocolate goes into the cake and yeah, becomes like a marble. Make it all pretty. It doesn't matter to me. It's going to my tummy. So, but yes, I am going to try and just swirl it as best as I can. And then I'm going to place this in my oven and it's going to bake for, for me, it took 15 minutes for it to bake in my eight by eight dish here. And yes, child. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. Can you just, can, I can't, I can't. It's really, honestly, it is an absolutely delicious cake. When I make these as cupcakes, I usually do make it as cupcakes. Um, they're so good. They're so good. They're gone really, really quickly in no time. Now, I did make this an 8 by 8 um, cake this year because um, I am going to cut them, cut these up in little rectangles and place them out on the platter. You can see the top is kind of like the little kind of crunchy, crackly top like you would get in a brownie. Yes. Yes. I don't know what else to say. You want this to cool a little bit before you remove it from your pan, at least cool enough till it's, um, you know, cool enough for you to handle it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife and run it around the sides of the, the dish here so that it loosens it up. Remember, I did not use any parchment paper or anything like that. I just used the butter and the flour. So I'm going to get that all around the sides of my pan and I'm going to flip this onto one platter. And after this flips onto one platter, I'm going to flip it onto another platter so that I can have the top side up because I like that crackly side. I think it just looks like a brownie and it just looks so delicious. And that is it. It is done. Let it cool completely before cutting into it. I'm going to cut this eight by eight and a half, and then I'm going to cut little um, rectangles out of it and then place it on a platter. You can put whipped cream, you can put fresh fruit, but it is just as good on its own. Like you'd re you really need nothing else but a cup of coffee or tea with this because it is that good. And it is absolutely beautiful. It's moist. It's flavorful. Those little bit of chocolate chips that we added to that chocolate batter at the end. Oh, my goodness, you get that little bit of, you just got to try it yourself, okay? Because, I mean, you just got to try it. And I hope that you do. And if you do try it and you enjoy it, let us know down in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, all the amounts will be listed below. And don't also forget to subscribe, like, and share this goodness. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.